Some might say we are living in a time when we're trying to make more conscious decisions about our personal lives, from the food we eat to the political candidates we support, even to the way we invest. Joining us now is Morgan Simon. She's the author of Real Impact, the Social, the New Economics of Social Change. Morgan, great to have you here live at the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So this is so interesting because I, I'm, I'm in business school right now, and I have, I, I'm not afraid to admit I had never heard of impact investing before actually getting to business school. It's kind of embarrassing, but I, I don't know if this is a term that a tip, the typical consumer or the typical, in, I don't want to say typical investor because, you know, normal people may not consider themselves typical investors, but I don't think the typical consumer knows what impact investing is. Well, I think that's the thing. We're all investors, right? Every dollar that we spend or invest, every vote that we take, it's all an investment in the society that we want to have. And impact investment is the opportunity to allow align your values with your investments in the same way as you mentioned as consumers, right? We think about it all the time, a fair trade coffee to organic food, but then when we take money out of the ATM to make those purchases, we're not really thinking about, well, where did my money spend the night? And is it supporting things that I care about? And the great thing about impact investment, there's so many opportunities moving away from fossil fuels, private prisons, moving money into clean energy, into healthy food access, into education, affordable housing, things that you can really be proud of. Now, what about the person who, who wants to invest in a company that's more socially relevant and conscious and, you know, has this social impact and they look at the company and they still see a lot of the things that the average investor looks at when an earnings report comes out. They see losses. They see some of the other triggers that would make it look like they're going to lose money. What, what do you say to that person who still wants to support this company? Sure. So I think in general, investing is a long-term game, right? I presume that none of us sitting here want to retire in the next 10 years. We're thinking in the 30, 50-year range. Yesterday in the Financial Times, they reported that Shell Oil only has less than 10 years of reserves until 2028. So is that really an investment I want to be making? Or do I want companies that are really thinking about the, the future? And another amazing thing published in a Harvard Business Review over an 18-year period looking at high sustainability companies, they had doubled the market cap and 4% productivity gains a year. There's very little that's achieved that in society. Maybe the computer you know, might be the only other example. So I think part of it is betting on long-term progress. And then in the very short term, just thinking about where you're banking, you know, that that's something where we're not really thinking so much about returns, but just the everyday convenience of can I deposit my checks, can I have access to ATMs? And you can absolutely do that with community banks and other local options where then you know where your money spends the night, like New Resource Bank says, and really make sure that you're supporting your community in the process. Absolutely. And even if we look at the recent unfortunate events of yesterday where mm -hmm. we saw actually gun stocks rise as a result of the news, what about to the other end where there are investors out there that aren't as socially conscious? Have you seen a, a shift in the overall trend of people who realize that they're tied into a company that has a negative impact um, on the general society and want to move into now being more socially minded when they are investing, doing this impact investing type of uh, action more so with their portfolio? Absolutely. So one in every five dollars is actually invested in some type of screen fund and often looking at firearms, specifically tobacco, you know, certain sin stocks, the things that make your grandma blush. Um, but beyond kind of those basics, um, the next step is to say, don't just check the social choice box and forget about it, right? That we need to be conscious consumers of impact investment, make sure it can really stand for the highest good possible. And that means don't just screen out the bad, proactively seek out the positive things you can be doing. What role has the changing mindset of consumer, has, uh, what role has the changing mindset of the consumer had on the way that companies are doing business? I mean, certainly there's an example uh, of the way that companies are so interested in pushing their own social enterprise projects, you know, greenwashing, you know, we can call it really to, for a marketing purpose, but at the same time, it, has there been less of an interest in companies uh, that might be seen as, as, as negatives in terms of impact investing? I mean, there's just been this huge movement in terms of, uh, of endowments and pressure on endowments moving out of, of certain types of companies. Has that actually affected the way that these companies are doing business? I mean, does a consumer actually play a role here? Absolutely. I mean, just take Uber and Lyft, right? And the recent controversy that drove over 300,000 users to Lyft saying, I want a company that's going to stand for my values. And that sort of consumer action of voting with your feet really does make a difference in company practice. And then beyond that, companies see the results in terms of productivity, that if my workers are getting paid a fair wage, if they're getting health care, if they're not worried about, can I take a day off to help my sick child, 
guess what? They're more productive. You know, this shouldn't be surprising, but it plays out in the numbers. What about in terms of the public markets? I mean, are there any examples of, of people saying, okay, I don't want to invest in this company, maybe a cigarette company, and that company actually having to change what it does in order to attract investors? Or is it really, at this point, uh, impact investing is so small that you know there are plenty of people who are happy to take those returns. Sure, so impact investment, I mean one thing to note is that it's about 119 billion dollars, right? And then 8.7 trillion that's in some sort of screen fund. So it's really the trillion dollar trend that just most people don't know much about, but it absolutely is growing and with so many diverse opportunities across all asset classes. So the amazing thing is you're seeing increasingly asset owners saying, I can put all my money in social products and feel really great about it and about the return that I'm getting. So I think what's really nice is we're getting at a point where markets are maturing, where these options are really out there for the average consumer. And one of the things in the book is I put in four easy steps, 20 minutes each, right, to really make it simple for people of how you can get on a pathway of having your money be mandatory responsibly. Now, when it comes to your 401k, things could get a little bit tricky there too, especially when we break out the different investments that you have. Um, so how do you control what what you're investing in there, what a company is investing in uh, that goes into the 401k, and, and don't the company's investments essentially become your investments at the end of the day? Absolutely, and I think part of it is really claiming our economic power. So knowing we might not be the ones that are actually getting to make those choices, right, that there's a manager in the middle, but they are accountable to you. You know, sometimes we forget that this is still our money and that we can make our voice. And from that perspective, I feel like we're all accidental billionaires one way or another. So for example, your alma maters, I presume, have endowments that are probably in the hundreds of millions to millions or billions. And every time they write you saying donate money, do you write back saying, well, where's my money invested? And is it in a way that really supports my values? So I think we have the opportunity, even if we don't always get to make the choices directly, but to advocate with the people who do. All right, Morgan, we're going to have to leave it there. All right, thank Thanks you so much. Thanks so much for joining us. That's thank Morgan you. Simon. She's the author of Real Impact, the new economics of social change, joining us live from the floor here on Cheddar.